چند تا موضوعی که ایشون مطرح کرده بودن خیلی راضی بودم من به آقای موسوی رای دادم ببینید کمتر کسی توی این سی سال بعد از انقلاب پیدا شده بود که مثل آقای احمدی نژاد روی خواسته های مردم پافشاری کنه Some of Musavi's supporters did not want their faces shown من والا با آقای موسوی رای دادم و انگیزه من این بود که احساس کردم کشور نیاز به یه سری تغییرات داره مخصوصا توی یه سری آزادی ها که توی این چهار سال احساس میکنم خیلی کمرنگتر شد این آزادی ها و امید داشتم که این موسوی رای بیاره شاید کشور به دوران حد اقل چهار سال قبل برگرده که شرایط همه چی فکر میکنم بهتر بود هم شرایط اقتصادی بهتر بود هم آزادی هایی که داشتیم بهتر بود The foreign media, especially BBC Farsi, played a significant role in fanning the fury of the post-election unrest. However, a bizarre incident of media sensationalism occurred in Baharistan Square. The opposition had called for a wide demonstration. Few turned up. CNN, in its Iran crisis special report, which had been airing for a few weeks and had dominated the news channel, broadcast live from the square. Except it had no camera on the ground due to the Iranian government restrictions toward foreign media presence. An unknown woman with a mobile acted as the main source. And they poured into the streets and they uh, started beating everyone. And they, uh, they tried to beat everyone on Saudi Bridge. And... The anchorman, who wasn't convinced, further enticed her reporting. My dear, this is, this is really terrifying to hear, and we're not only getting this report from you, we got a report from another source in Tehran describing the situation today being terrible, uh, saying people were being shot like animals, they beat the people like animals. Are you safe right yes, now? exactly, exactly, exactly. Press TV, the Iranian English news channel, happened to be in the exact spot in Baharistan Square with a live camera. Its report was 180 degrees different. The press TV reporter, which had seen the CNN report, deliberated on the misreflection. Meanwhile, CNN has broadcast an interview with a so-called anonymous witness of Wednesday's protest in Tehran's Bahoristan Square. However, the report is not in conformity with the footage press TV reporters obtained from the same area. CNN, on the other hand, altogether stopped broadcasting Iran crisis from June 24, 2009. On June 25th, the next day, Michael Jackson died in a disputed fashion. The media frenzy of Iran was replaced by the star's odd and mysterious death. Even though no connection was ever made, the coincidence surprised many. The post-election trauma turned more sour in three other calendar events. First, the Day of Quds, or Jerusalem Day, a day honored annually by all Muslims. A day heralded in 1979 and innovated by the late Imam Khomeini to focus the attention of all Muslims throughout the world on the liberation of Palestine. It is a dreaded day for Israel. Supporters of Musavi repeated slogans contrary to the trend. No to Gaza, no to Lebanon, only Iran. This was essentially a form of blasphemy to the revolutionary crowd. Confrontations erupted and tear gas peppered the streets of Tehran. The second critical day was on Students' Day. The government forces were at this point furious and the opposition was equally unrelenting. But the threshold was on the day of Ashura. The day of Imam Hussein's martyrdom is commemorated with lengthy processions and mourners fill the streets of every city and town. During the Ashur demonstration of 1978, the former Shah of Iran had witnessed a procession crowd overhead by helicopter. The world then witnessed his regime collapse following that demonstration. On this day of Ashura, the election protesters made the fatal mistake of chanting against and even attacking the mourners. There, the line of tolerance was finally crossed. In 2010, the Ashura procession was even more sensitive. Mourners were deeply offended by the essentially politically motivated opposition. The day descended into fury and bloodshed as eight were killed and hundreds injured.
Eerie incidents took place. A police truck was seen running over protesters. The chief of police reported that the truck had been stolen. در مورد اون خودرویی که در واقع اختشاشگرها را زیر کرد خودرو شناسایی شد مارکش شناسایی شد احضار شد بعد معلوم شد که خودرو را از ایشون سرقت کردن و با خودرو مسروقه این کار کردن در جهت شناسایی اون سارقی که این اقدام را کرده که خب قطعا هم معلومه دیگه این کار را کردن که این ضربه را بزنن و قطعا کسی با ماشین خودش این کار را انجام نمیده the question arose, if the police cannot retain control over their vehicles, how can they possibly retain security over the city? Mir Hossein Musavi's nephew was another fatality. He was shot in the back, far from the center of the chaos, a murder carried out in cold blood. The murder resembled that of Neda Aghasultan, the young woman killed during street protests months earlier, revered throughout the world as a symbol of the uprising. Marred by suspicions, neither side could imagine such murders. The perpetrators of both crimes have yet to be found. But both seem to be the casualties of a crime that was planned, strategized, and executed for political gains. The weight of the Ashura events had burdened participants. They wanted to respond, but not through violence. A mass demonstration was organized and called by the government. The number of people who attended swelled beyond expectation, yet all remained peaceful, and it had the effect of quelling the agitation. The Western mainstream media reported it with an apparent grudge. Also, Ahmadinejad's portraits had somehow disappeared from the demonstration the president no longer mattered. Those who had voted for the winning candidate no longer cared about the dispute over the count. The presence of the millions of faces, young and old, was a sufficient answer. Enough was enough. The election disputes were pacified for the moment. Had the government learned to tolerate and to deal with the tangible opposition? Had it learned to scrutinize its own mistakes and pave the way for a more transparent media? Live debates between opposition factions appeared for the first time after the election. Would they continue? The fightings were lifted from the streets and placed onto the TV screen. چون اینه که خود سران زیر علم کیهان دارن این کار رو میکنن. بیرو در واسه آقای شریعت مداری ارادت دارن ما. باید پس بگیم که آقای کباکه بیان شما حسابتون رو از حساب مثل آقایان موسوی و کروبی و خاتمی جدا میکنی. And had the opposition learned the hard way that the minority was a minority, legitimate but a minority nevertheless, had they learned to trade within the constitution and not panic for regime change, as insinuated by the Western media? Iran, while seemingly fatigued by the recent chaos, appears more cocky and ready for tougher challenges. This bolstered the theory that the post-election trauma acted like a vaccine, momentarily weakening the body, but ultimately strengthening it in the long run. Very soon after the post-election tremor subsided, the Western powers, especially the United States, started beating the drums of war against Iran. Having failed to uproot the regime, they began pondering wilder cards. The question remains, when will the complexities of Iranian politics be understood by the West?